Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about sloppiness. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Hi Frederick, I have a software engineer on my team who can't seem to get his code reviews approved. His code gets rejected 10 times before finally getting approved. There's issues with the design, overall sloppiness, maintainability and so forth. And he isn't improving. What do I do? Well, you uh, you have a few options here. The thing that I would do first and foremost is to bring this up with your manager, like whoever is in charge of uh, this person, and explain the situation and try to just highlight the issues that you're dealing with and then ask the fundamental question. How much are you willing to invest into this person? And this is a very interesting question because every company is different here. And this is the thing that I've tried to communicate as much as I can to people who ask me questions about expectations on their skill level and seniority and things like that. You have to understand that every company is different in terms of how much are they willing to pay you before they've had enough because it really does come down to that. At the end of the day, it comes down to money and expectations and so forth. Because in one company, you can be a junior software developer who doesn't really know what you're doing and they're gonna fire you immediately because what they're trying to hire is a mid-level or a person who is much better than you or who's gonna be quicker on the uptake. They simply don't have the interest in waiting for you to get to the skill level that you need to be. It doesn't mean that you won't be a really good software developer if you got if you just got the chance, but you're not good enough for them. And in another company, they're just going to be fine. Yeah, they just need someone to do the basics and then, hey, even though you, do, you got fired at the last job, it's going to be fine in this one. And the, that is the fundamental question. I've had this question before. Whenever I've trained anybody, any junior software developer, and basically been in, put in charge of their progress at the company that I was working at, I've always asked this question of my manager because I don't know. The thing is, I can give this person my full attention and that is usually why my managers have come to me because they know that if I take care of this junior, I'm going to try to do it as well as I can. I will make sure that they feel engaged, I'm going to apply a little bit of pressure, not too much. They're always going to be able to talk to me and ask questions and so forth and I'm going to try my absolute best to make sure that they get quality education and that is the thing that I'm offering as the more experienced developer in the conversation but at the same time I have the other perspective which is the company them the company the company itself uh, because the company as I said like they are trying to get someone to be productive because at the end of the day it's about money right and that means that I have to ask that question when do you feel I should highlight that this person is not good enough because then we're going to have to make a um, judgment call or inform this person. What usually happens is that you talk to the individual in question and you simply for inform them saying that we're not seeing the progress from you that we want and then you either agree that all right this is prob it's p probably best that they quit because the, com the, the person in question doesn't sh is not showing the improvements and they feel uncomfortable about the situation or you create some type of constructive like expectation roadmap where we say okay let's give it another go well let's try to figure the figure out the issues because that's the first thing you try to figure out if you is there anything we can do to make the situation workable because hiring developers is usually expensive and even if they're not so productive the best thing is if you can figure out a way to just magically make them more productive or see the results that you're looking for and then you clearly communicate that to the to the person in question and you see how it looks after X amount of time units now this is none of this is something that you should take on yourself if you are dealing with a fellow coworker you need to bring this to your manager and they will have a process for how to deal with this and if what you're saying is is true it's highly likely that this person will get fired Another perspective is, of course, also like if you're getting the code rejected ten times, because this is the other extreme. I don't want to. I, I want to say this for completeness' sake. 
and usually this is not the case but it does happen you might have the situation where this junior or this person who is whoever right uh, isn't actually all that bad it's more about that you have very specific ways of doing work or you have very rigorous and strict code reviews I mean guys every single developer is going to be different when they do code reviews. Everybody has their own code reviewing style, just as they have different value systems. If you, I can promise you this: if you pass the same code review to three different people, you're going to have three completely different. In many cases, in many, in some cases, of course, there's going to be overlap. They're going to have the same opinion, but you're going to get comments from all of them on something. And in some cases, you're not going to hear a single thing because that person doesn't hear really review in the same way as other people and this is the complementary skills that I've talked about uh, which is very powerful and very useful both from the company's perspective and from your perspective as someone who might be learning how to do things if you're only accustomed to working in one specific way and you don't have a range of different types of personalities in the team you're actually going to be less of a developer I'll give you my favorite example is me and my coworker that I work with today we are we could not be more different in code reviewing. I have things that I feel very strongly about, things that I usually look very sharply at, and he has things, of course, that he is looking really sharply uh, sharp at. And my perspective is usually much looser. I kind of go with, as long as I know what you're doing and I see no real risk in terms of maintainability or something like that, I'm not going to get picky and all up in your face about if you did did you use a function here or did you use a lambda or like a name function or a lambda uh, or is this ver this variable name perfect no it might not be but if I can't think of something in the next two seconds that is going to be better then shit alright let's call it whatever it is for now and then get back it together uh, back, get back to it later he is the op opposite he goes really deep, he will pull out the branch and he will like really do his homework, which is a very good thing. I, I'm no, and this is something that I work on myself to be better at that quality, qualitative mindset when you're doing a code review. But uh, at the same time, he is much, much stricter. Now, he's a very nice guy, so he's going to let a lot of stuff slide. But we have another guy that we worked with, where, and he's unfortunately in a management position, where he has had severe problems with people getting really shit scared of him, basically, because not only is he really strict in his code reviews, he's also in a position of power. And as you can imagine, if you're in a position of power, you have the ability to really to fire somebody, basically, and you're that way, and you're really opinionated that creates a lot of tension whenever you're going to send in a code review and for a junior developer that I mean that could be an effect in of itself like you really have you're nervous and just the nerves in and of itself might affect this the end result now I'm not saying as I said that this is the case I'm just saying that consider that also like try to have an open mind here because if you really can say that no actually everybody else seems to be doing this pretty well and it's really only this person who is the issue take it up with your manager and it's very likely that you're going to have to fire this person. So what I want you to take away from this is that if you have someone who is not performing due to that, because these are the sorts of warning flags that a lot of companies are looking for. Because if you're dealing with a software developer who has problems just structuring their code well, or they're really sloppy, or like they, the implementations are always kind of off. There's not really, like they do, really don't seem to have a knack for this whole programming thing. That is so damn hard to fix. It can go away with a lot of training and practice and so forth and a lot of patience, but in some cases, guys, and this is, I'm very sorry to say, sometimes this is just the way this person will work. The, I, not all developers are made equal. And I have worked with people like that, where like they, they just barely manage to survive in the company, even after years of working. It doesn't really change. And there's many factors as to why that might be. And this is the sort of situation that you might find yourself in. So first and foremost, go and talk to your manager, raise the issue and explain the situation. The manager is then going to most likely do, as I said, they're going to try to figure out is there a way around this issue or they might just shop immediately and say, all right, then this person is out. Or they will create some type of roadmap for improvements or expectations and so forth or investigate the issue. That's what's going to happen. And it's very likely that the person is going to get fired unless they improve within a certain time period. And also think about the other perspective. It might be the case that you have very strict rules regarding code reviews. That might be another issue. 
I'm not saying that you shouldn't do it that way if you f if everybody else can figure it out and this person can't because then he or she is the outlier. But it is worth thinking about it because if you see that you continuously have a lot of drop-offs, if you try to get in new people and they kind of either leave or they have these sorts of issues frequently, then it's mo very likely that you have an internal process that is probably not working so well. Have a great day.